up to this point, we've got all of the functionality then. We've got uh, database creation, database destruction, adding to the database, retrieving from the database, and updating data to the database. Let's uh, put a little polish on a couple of things here and there. The biggest is this, that when you, uh, for the first time, try to show classes, so I've deleted my database completely. I'm trying to show classes. There's nothing to show. That looks weird. That looks awkward. So let's set up a functionality for us, for nothing to be displayed until there's classes to show. Um, so there's several ways we can handle this. The main idea, the way that this works, is well, the show classes, the show classes function, the show classes button is the one that does all of this. So let's go look at our show classes function to see how we can further change this to, to deal with that possibility. Let's see, sh delete show class. Okay, so show classes. The first thing we're trying to do here is. Um, function show classes, db all docs. We're trying to get our, our data. And what we've got is um, if we get up to a certain point here, eventually this jumps over to show class table. Well, if I, if I reactivate just to look at it um, else, console log uh, success rows. This is going to show us that we've got the... we don't have anything really to show. An empty database. Before we get into this whole show tables of classes, this is the part where we can uh, cut that off. Because if we get to this else, we're trying to do all docs. Give me all the data in the database. This failure that happens here is not the same as there being an empty database. That's not, that's not a failure. An empty database is an empty database, but there's still a database. So we're getting into else. We're getting into else. Pass the rows of data to the processor to create the table. Before we do this then, this is where we should have maybe an if-else. If there are no rows of data, don't proceed with the show class table. There's no classes to show. Or else there is data. So proceed. Let's give that one a shot. We're, uh, we're going to add an if-else statement. Um, to it afterwards, then we'll we'll fix it. Obviously, this needs to be inside of it, but I'll leave it there for a moment. If else, this is inside of show show classes. Let's say <coughs> first oops, comment first check if there's data to show. Or trying to show data. You get the idea. First check if there's data to show. If there's no data to show, then don't proceed. That button will will not uh, will not do anything. The if part. Um, we see that we also have down here data.length. Well, data in this case, data.length is the um, short is the is the short term for the data we're passing into it. Success .rows. So we've got the function definition of the show the table with data that we're passing into it, and we can do data .length. We haven't gotten to this part yet, so the name of it is success .rows .length. We have different ways to do this. Let me let me try one way here. I haven't tried this way. Let's just simply check success .rows. I don't think this will fully, fully work, but I just want to check it. Uh, let's say uh, there is data, there is not data. This might not fully work, but 
something that's not data. I'm kind of thinking about this on the spot, so um, this is what sometimes happens. You think, well, what about this? What about that? So obviously uh, the other 500 lines that we did, I had it noted. For this one, I'm making it up, and we'll see what happens. So just let me just check here. Uh, comment that one out for a moment also. I don't want to show anything yet. Show classes. Let's start. Success to use data. That should be oops, that should be a console output. Not a comment, actual output. There is data. Okay, so doing it that way, it's not really going to do it because it does exist. Okay, so it should be dot length. So I was just checking that. Sometimes you're able to do this by simply checking the existence of the element, um, but this doesn't work in here because there is an element. It's just an empty element. Uh, so what we're trying to do is regarding length. Okay, if the length <coughs> is empty, or if it's not empty. So here's the part where we have to do then greater than zero. The, the length at the moment of an empty array is zero. So now we're saying if we have more than zero, one or more items of data in the database, and this one is based on, uh, you know, on one. One is that there's one thing in the database, two is that there's two, etc. So if the length of the rows, which in this case are processed in arrays, is greater than zero, that means we have data in the database, so we'll get the first result. Or else we have no data in the database, so we'll have there is no data. no data. Okay, good. So that's our check. That's a possibility to check. We have our success object which has rows. We saw a while ago that the rows is an array. That's why we can do, you know, data parentheses zero for the first one or square brackets. So okay, give me the length of the number of rows. If it's greater than zero, we must have data or else we have zero or less, so we have no data. If I save something, at least one thing, to the database, I should get the console output of there is data. So I'm doing this check first inside of function show class before I get into function show table of class, which I commented that out for a moment. Guess where that's going to go in a moment. But I want to add something to the database now. So I'm going to add class 111, show classes, there is data. So good. So there is data in the database. If I refresh it completely, show classes, it sees data. So this is where I need the show table of classes. Under if the true condition. So move. Be careful here, you don't have two of them. I had one that was up here, which I commented out, and then eventually I moved it in here. The actually running fun function show class table. So you got one of them in show class. If you've got two of them, it defeats the purpose. It's got to be one inside the condition. So if I 
refresh that. I know I've saved one thing to the database so far. Show classes. It's starting to show something. I'm going to delete everything. Confirm that. Confirm that. Refresh. There's nothing in the database. Show classes. There's no data. So let's confirm that that works. We've got an if else. It doesn't show anything until there's something to show. Yes, so right now I have no data in my database. Show class, I just get the output that says there's no data. As soon as I save something to the database, that shows as before. I refresh it, I know I have data. Show class, shows a class. That didn't quite work then. Call me over. Did everyone get that? <clears throat> yes. Okay, so that uh, that's one way to do this where that button doesn't do anything until there's actual data. I hadn't thought about this one, but let's think about this. Let's see if we... Yes? But the thing about before that uh, the show, show class table is under the show class, right? Yes. And you just move it up. I moved it into the if statement, which is still inside of show class. But the show class table is not in the show class anymore? Uh, the function definition never was because we had end of the function show class and we started a function show class new outside and so it was never in there if it worked it still might have worked which is fine but uh, this show table class to run the function has to be in the if statement in the show class I can double check your code if you need it yes uh, it's not quite because if I'm doing a if I'm doing a put, that's one thing different than a show. I could do show without do putting any data first. Okay, so I have data, and then if I, I just put in quick data, and if I edit that, then I've got, okay, you're editing class 111, and that's math 2 with instructor Smith. Edit the class. I'm sort of feeling maybe we should have called this update class instead of edit class. Does that make more sense, maybe? Update the class instead of edit class? That's easy to fix. Let's go back and change that. Update class instead of edit class. This data shows it. Changed, changed. So a quick change for that. I'm going to go with uh, update class rather than edit class. And that's found at about line 147 where we've created that whole functionality update class. Button, input type button, value, update class instead of edit class. Slightly different terminology. Maybe it makes a little more sense.
So all of that is to just have it show update class instead of edit class. Now what I was about to say a moment ago, I didn't quite think of it, but what if, let's see if we can reason this out, if this shows up like this for the very first time, why do we even need a show classes button? A person here, if I don't have my console, and a regular user comes to this and they click show class, uh, it's broken. We see results in the console, because we were developers, we've got results in the console. But for the user, they're, they're not, never going to look at that. So let's see if we have a way to not show the button classes until we actually have data to show. I have This is one of the ones, again, I didn't have in mind, but let's see if we can figure it out. Um, because this one is completely one that I haven't done yet. I'm going to make a copy of my work just in case. Okay, so reasoning this out. Feel free to opine as well. We don't need the button to exist until there is data in the database, and we're seeing we've got success.rows.length. So we can we can check if there's data in the database. So we're probably going to need all docs again. We're probably going to create a brand new function. No, wait a minute. Maybe we can do it right after. Maybe we can do it right after init db. Init db creates a database, and at that moment, there's no data in the database. We can do an all docs at that moment, and then it'll be, you know, rows equals to zero. Maybe at that point. So maybe we can hide. We can hide the the button. So we've got L div L button show. Let's right after we show it, let's hide the button so it's in a hidden state. So let's try this. Is all experimental code? We'll see if it works or not. Live uh, L btn show dot hide. So we're referencing the button that's on screen, and then we're hiding it. Should confirm that. We have here, the button is hidden. It does flash on for a moment, but no matter. Okay, so no button. We want to reactivate the button. So uh, let's try using this init DB. Um, return should be the last item, so... Before that, here's where we'll try to do db.alldocs. Probably the same as before as show class. Temporarily, so we probably need include all docs, include docs true. We don't really need to alphabetize anything, so that won't matter. We're just checking if there is data. We do need the usual function failure. Success. Break that. If failure. That matters. Um, here is where we do. Wait a minute. 
uh, this is where we do okay success okay we're under else we're under success here's where we need to then check one more if else um, to see is there is there real data in the database this is just that it exists but not that there's data so here's where we then check success dot rows dot length greater than zero so there is there is data in the database and the whole point of this is to do uh, what do we call it el button show dot show and else nothing something so I think something so there is something in the database but it should have done a show um, something is appearing now button show that's what it's called right L button show, L button hide. Maybe I can't reference it because it doesn't exist yet inside of init. Now we're getting into else, which is something. Um, so length is not greater than zero. What is the length? In this part here, we'll do success. What is that length? What is that length? Zero. Length is not greater than zero. Zero. Zero is not greater than zero. Hitting that part, which means that the database is empty. We save something. Here's data. Here's data. Let's show. data <coughs> so we are getting data I guess I guess it's working because there's no data so we don't have the button there is data we're showing it but we're not we don't have the button I guess it doesn't matter then we start over we have data so it shows the button. That's what we want, right? That's there's not <coughs> Yeah, so there there is no data at this point, no button. We added data. There is there's data. The button's not coming back, which maybe we can figure that out, but then it shows the data. That's what I care about. If I were to start the whole app from the first time here, it does show it. We want that we want that button now. That was the whole point. Don't show a button if there's no data. Show a button if there is data. There is data, so show that. There is data. So okay. Let's confirm that. So uh, I don't know where I left off before I started to talk to myself, but here is the here's what we want. So wherever your code is at, this is what we want. Um, in the in a DB, I guess it's the whole thing. Let's make a note here. Uh, check if there's data in DB before showing show Show 
class button. So this is inside of your init db before return. After you after you create the new instance of the database before end of return, before end of the function. We are going to do db all docs. That gives us our way to check what's in the database. We have this time one option, include docs true. We don't need the ascending true. Doesn't matter. We just need to see if, if there is data. We're trying to get all the data from the database. We have the usual failure and success. So we have a failure and we have, a, we have an else. Nothing needs to be sent to the user at all. This is all internal. So console log, I guess for fun, we can output the failure just to see what might appear at that point. So if there's no failure, if we were able to get the database, which could be empty, we go to else. We could then further check, okay, it's, it exists at least, the database. Is there more than zero records or rows in the database? And I'm just checking the actual number. If it's zero, zero is not greater than zero. If zero, <laughs> if it's zero, zero is not greater than zero, it's equal to zero. So it would jump down to else, and it would say, you don't have more than zero. Just a quick output. That can be empty, nothing for the user. Well, if it's one, which is greater than zero, console output for fun, and then the button that was hidden at another point, show it again. That's jQuery. We have dot hide, dot show. Why do you hide the button? We hid the button down here. As soon as we initialized... Initialize. Well, uh, not quite initialized. Instantiated. As soon as we instantiated right here, we're saying we've got the BTN show items, created a jQuery variable, and then right away we hide it. So here we can comment hide show class button until needed. You can say C line, whatever this is, C line 29. Let's make sure our line numbers don't change. See line 29. So we're hiding the button. We're not showing the button until necessary with a quick check. The check is the length, the number of rows in the database. We use that when we were building the table back on show table of classes. We jump from row to row based on the length of all of our data. And that's doing what we want to do. Don't even show the button until there's some classes to show. Don't even give the user a sense of what they're missing until they start to add data. Then once there's data, Once there's data, show the button. Okay, so go ahead and type that and check if that works. And then I've got, I guess, the other thing. The button is not appearing. I think I know how to fix that in one moment. That should make your functionality of what I'm trying to do here. Don't show a button until we're ready to have data to show. You see, as I've said before, I've been teaching this class for a few years now. I change it up every once in a while to make it fun for myself, because you're all seeing it for the first time, but I've seen it like 40 times. And so here's something different that I hadn't done for a previous class. You're the first class to see this. So, so Joe and Joy, you can confirm we didn't do this on a previous class. This is a brand new thing that we've done for the first time. So, our, our, so every class I can say, this class is better than every other class I've done, because I always add a little bit extra. I guess the very last thing that we can do at the moment is, what I'm saying is that if we, uh, if you test it, 
like this, if I delete everything, there's no data, I'm going to add one, one document, that button doesn't appear. The way we can get it to appear is we can add dot show to we can add dot show to to show table class. Once we get to the point of show table class, we know we've got we've got data to show, so it's probably pretty safe at this point. Show show that button. So if you go back to your show class table, L B T N show dot show should be pretty safe at this point. Reactivate show class button. online whatever line that was it's not really a great thing to do to reference your line numbers because it'll probably change but in my case it's line 56 reactivate the class button That is when we have no data, we have no button. Good. Add data, go, button appears. And we've got data. It wasn't super necessary at that moment, I suppose, because we've got the classes. The class, the table shows, so we didn't really need the button. Showing that just does that, which is not even necessary. And now that we've got data to show, I've added at least one record, so we've got data. I can show that, I can edit it. Update that, it's been updated. Loading it for the first time, and then we've got that. Uh, don't worry about it, that it's like visible for a millisecond and then it goes away. When we integrate this with our Cordova project, remember we have a splash screen. So all this stuff will happen behind the scenes with the splash screen happening while the stuff loads up that will maybe show and hide quickly. And then the app loads past the splash screen and then it works as it's supposed to. That's part of the reason for the splash screen, to hide stuff that's happening behind the scenes. So we'll get this into our project, back into our Cordova project next time. I think at this point, um, probably got everything done that I wanted to do for this, plus a couple of extra things. We're saving the data, retrieving the data, putting a little polish on the interface. Again, this will... so that Go works great. So we're putting... Uh, we're gonna put... we're gonna make it look nice next time once we put it back into our Cordova project. Like all of this, it's pretty clunky. We'll make this appear. You know, we'll... we'll will actually click the pencil and this will appear. These fields will appear on screen, a nice little fade or flip animation, not that it's here all floating out weird. And then we're going to hide the delete classes button on the about screen or somewhere out of the way so that we don't accidentally delete it on this screen. We have to go over to the options screen or the about screen or something. The functionality of all of it works. Then we need to integrate it with our project and polish it, and then we're getting very close to the end of the project. And we're going to get... Uh, probably next Tuesday at the latest, next week at the latest, we'll probably start to release it to the actual App Store. Then we're going to work with a version 2. Once that's released, we're going to work with a version 2 and add more features. Geolocation features and um, you know, sending emails and tweets. We'll be able to do that in the project. So we'll then do releasing a version 2. 
So probably by Tuesday we will go through the process of creating a, an account on the actual app stores to, to release it. Now obviously this is still your school work. This might not be what you really want to release for, we, for real. I would recommend, because we're going to be able to create an account for free, I would recommend just create a free fake account to get it done. Then we will have time to maybe, if you want to do your own version of things, and release a real app. That's getting a little ahead of ourselves. So I think we're on schedule. We'll wrap up at this point. I'll put my code in the folder. Any general questions about today or the future of the class? All right, let me put my code, the latest version, into the network folder. You can grab that and have a little lab time. So any of those that have a temp on them, don't uh, you don't want those. You want the one without temp. 11, like that. So I'll get rid of those temps. Yeah. You want the one with 11. 